The atmosphere inside of the MCM investigations van was tense. There were several reasons for this. Firstly, there were too many people in it. While Bridget sat with Phil in the front seat, there were three people in the rear compartment, which was at least one too many to fit comfortably. It was not designed to be a people carrier, seeing as it was, after all, a converted ice cream van. The three people in question were DSI Susan Burns, head of the National Bureau of Criminal Investigation, Detective Donica Wilson, also of the NBCI, and James Hammond, Chief Legal Counsel for Irish Operations for Tallina Corporation. Secondly, the van was tense because it contained, at least in the opinion of the three people in the back, one too many German shepherds. In the defence of Maggie, the aforementioned dog, she was firmly of the opinion that the back contained three too many people. While Bridget could not confirm this, she suspected that Maggie did not like the guardee, which in one way was odd, as she used to be one. On the other hand, it made perfect sense. From what Bridget understood, Maggie was not only forcibly removed from the force, but she would have also been forcibly removed from life itself if the dearly departed Bunny McGarry had not intervened and helped to fake her death. Bridget was sketchy on the exact details of what happened, and, seeing as Bunny wasn't around anymore, and Maggie couldn't exactly fill in the blanks, it was likely to stay that way. Not that Maggie was barking at their guests or anything, in fact, it was the exact opposite. She was sitting there in silence, just looking at them. Maggie had the ability to make that feel way more threatening than it sounded. She also had a chronic flatulence issue, which did nothing for the ambience. It wasn't possible to open a window, as they needed to keep all external noise out of the van, because, thirdly, and most importantly, they were all intently listening to the goings-on in the warehouse that sat one street over via a listening device located in a titanium briefcase. Bridget tried to keep the tension from her voice. Are we sure they won't find the bug? Hammond shook his head. The man had a supercilious air to him that had previously only been a little annoying but in a confined space and a tense situation, was kicked up several notches to fingernails on a blackboard level. Guaranteed. As long as your man presses the concealed button on the handle, the bug will turn itself off and become undetectable. State of the art. Bridget found this a lot less reassuring than intended. Probably because her boyfriend, Paul Mulcrone, surprised her two months ago with a state-of-the-art TV with a curved screen, voice recognition, and surround sound. Every time she sneezed, it turned itself over to MTV Base, and it was properly getting on her tits. She was looking forward to slagging Paul off about it. The reason she hadn't been able to yet was that for the last six weeks, after MCM Investigations was hired by Mr. Hammond, off the books, to investigate his head of security on not much more than a hunch. Paul had been working deep undercover, pretending to be a man called Danny Byrne. He didn't do cocaine, he didn't have massive debts, and the only thing he definitely shared with the fictitious Danny Byrne was a dislike of strangers grabbing his arse. What he did have was a television that Bridget knew he got off some guy called One-Eyed Barry, that inexplicably turned itself on at 4 a.m. some mornings and started talking French. He also seemingly had the urge to show Bridget how much more responsible he was these days, which was why he'd thrown himself into the undercover gig with such gusto. She had not seen him in the last six weeks because Esther Levy was paranoid and they couldn't take any chances.